Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new here and you like this kind of content, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Now, my first video on this bike, my personal bike that I purchased, 2023 Yamaha MTO 9 SP. The first video talked about the five main reasons I purchased the bike. So I'll link that here below in case you missed it. But today I'm gonna do my full in-depth review. So here's how we're going to structure this out today. Uh, I'll talk about the models and the pricing. I'll show you the seating position, the riding position. Uh, we'll take you on a tour of the bike. We'll talk about all its specs, all its features, how everything works. We'll get it out on the road for some great testing. We'll come back here. We'll discuss the competition. We'll summarize any pros and cons, and then we'll have some final thoughts. So with that, let's get riding. All right, let's cover models and pricing on the MT-09. Now, as we go through this review, it's important to understand that the MT-09, uh, previously the FZ-09 here in the USA, has gone through several generations. Uh, it's important to know that in 2021, Yamaha almost completely redesigned the bike, improving a lot of key aspects of the bike. So keep that in mind. So for 2023, the MT-09 comes in the base model and the SP model. The base model is $97.99. Uh, the SP model is about $1,700 more at uh, 11,499. So what do you get by going up to the SP model? Well, there's quite a bit. You get unique styling, you get cruise control. Most importantly, you get highly updated premium suspension with fully adjustable uh, KYB forks in the front and an Oland rear shock. Now, should you get the SP model? In my honest opinion, yes. The value, the $1,700 for what you're getting for all the suspension and the cruise control you couldn't do those things in the aftermarket for $1,700. So if those are things you're at all interested in, yes, the SP is a better value. If you don't care about those things, then no, save the money and just get the base model. Let's look at the seat height and the riding position on the MT-09. So the seat height we're looking at is 32 and a half inches or by 825 millimeters. So not too bad. It's not the lowest out there, but it's you know pretty average for a bike like this. The seat's pretty wide and it does push your legs out a little bit. So if you're a shorter rider, you know, this is something you really should check out at the dealership to make sure you're going to be comfortable with it. Now the riding position is relatively upright. Uh, you can see here the bend in my leg. So it doesn't have as much leg room as obviously like a Goldwing or a touring bike or an adventure bike, but it's not bad. And then you can see the forward lean. Let me try to put the bike on the side stand. The forward lean is really not that bad. Like this would be upright and this is this bike. Let me kind of show that again. So this would be upright and here's this bike. So there's not much of a reach to the bars. It's pretty comfortable and that slight bend in your back helps kind of keep your back straight and you can kind of brace yourself into the wind a little bit because there is quite a bit of wind blast on a bike like this, obviously. So overall, it's probably the most comfortable bike in the segment in terms of the ergonomics. The bars are pretty high. You have good leg room and it's not a punishing place to be. Let's cover the specs just briefly on the MT-09 SP. All right, so she's 419 pounds or 190 kilograms, fully fueled up with fuel, ready to ride. With the engine, it's the very well-loved 890 cc, liquid-cooled double overhead cam, inline three. Uh, she's putting out about 117 horsepower or 87 kilowatts at 9,900 RPM and 69 foot-pounds uh, of torque or 93 newton meters at 7,000 RPM. Compression ratio of 11.5 to one. Clutch is a multi-plate uh, assist and slip clutch, six-speed transmission, and of course, you've got a chain final drive. Front suspension, so this is where the SP starts to show some of its differences. You've got a 41 millimeter inverted KYB fork, adjustable preload, adjustable high-speed compression, adjustable low-speed compression, uh, 5.1 inches or 129 millimeters of travel. This is a very nice fork. Rear suspension, again, this is why you would get the SP. Single Olin shock, it's got a remote reservoir, adjustable preload and adjustable compression damping and adjustable rebound damping, 4.8 inches or 121 millimeters of rear travel. All right, the brakes, front brakes, you have dual 298 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes, uh, ABS obviously, and it's two mode ABS, which is tied to the IMU uh, computer of the bike. It also has adjustable lift control, traction control, throttle modes, all that stuff, which is set through the TFT, of course. Uh, so anyway, back to the brakes. They're Advix calipers. Uh, would be nice to maybe see like Brembo, but you know, these are fine. They have a little bit softer initial feel, uh, but they do have good power once you, once you really get into them. Uh, let's see, and then you've got, you know, four piston calipers on each side. 
Rear is a 245 millimeter disc with a one piston caliper. Tires, uh, you have a rear tire, 180, 55, 17. Pretty typical front tire, 120, 70, 17. Let's talk about the fuel tank. Fuel tank is 3.7 gallons or 14 liters. It's good for around 150 miles uh, or 240 kilometers if you're not riding too fast. You can average around 50 miles a gallon or 4.7 liter per 100 kilometer, depending on how you ride. I will say, I think that these newer, uh, these newer engines on the updated uh, MT-09s uh, seem to get a little better mileage than the older bikes did. Seat height, we looked at that at 32 and a half inches. Uh, wet weight, 417 pounds. Warranty, you get a one year factory warranty. Let's talk about maintenance. So I am doing my own maintenance on this bike. I found it to be very, very simple. I'll show you over here. The oil filter is an automotive spin-on type filter. Uh, there we go, under there. And the drain plug, you can see right down there. That's pretty exposed. So don't be hitting any curbs or anything with this bike. It's not an adventure bike, people. Um, the Yamaha owner's manual says they want you to change the oil every 4,000 miles or 7,000 kilometers or every six months. You also do a break-in service at about uh, 400 miles, which I've already done on this bike. Valve adjustments don't come up until 26,000 miles or 42,000 kilometers. Air filter every 24,000 miles or 37,000 kilometers. Spark plugs 12,000 miles or 19,000 kilometers. So, you know, Japanese bike, Yamaha, pretty easy to maintain. You shouldn't have any drama with that. And if you want to do it yourself, it's pretty straightforward to do. Let's take a tour, starting with the lighting, and then I'll, we'll turn this off so we don't drain our battery. LED lighting for everything. You have this kind of signature running light here. Then you have your high and low beam, which is this controversial kind of tiny little light in here. Uh, turn signals, LEDs. You also have these LED running lights. You can see that's the running light. That's the turn signal portion, so kind of interesting. And if you wonder why this is flopping around, because every time you even bump into this at all, the turn signals fall out of the housing and they flop around. So I got to do something about that. That's a typical Yamaha thing that you see. Uh, the lighting in the back, so you can see the rear turn signals and the rear LED brake light, which is integrated there. Um, and, you know, we'll get to the tour here. That's what we'll do now. So, turn that off, turn that off, and we'll take a little tour. We talked about the wheels, tires, brakes, low front fender, fork, um, the front, uh, not fairing, but the headlight assembly. Now, this bracket here, you see, this is not factory. This is for my Pewee's windshields that I mount on the bike, um, which I'll show you in the next video. Forks, you've got the adjustments here for the preload, the damping, stuff like that. Adjustable uh, brake lever for reach. The clutch lever is not adjustable, and it is cable clutch. You can see this is where you take your uh, drug test right here, so that's handy for that. Fuel tank we talked about. This little ring is for a tank bag, SW Motec, which is not shown right now. Side of the engine, the radiator, of course, up here controls, nothing too special here. The seat, the seat is uh, on the SP is this kind of more suede material. It's a pretty comfortable seat for a sporty bike like this, pretty wide, pretty supportive. Passenger seat's not very good. Obviously, you know, these are not good bikes for passengers, passenger pegs. Um, that's just a satisfying, satisfying click there. Very Japanese. This is a mount for a rear bag, which obviously is not stock. Um, Rear fender assembly. A lot of people do these fender eliminators. I'm not a fan of those. I like these fenders. They look a little dumb, I guess, but they keep the water from spraying up in the mud and stuff uh, when you, if you ride in the rain. Blue wheels, of course. You can see the polished swing arm, which is an SP thing. Yeah, the exhaust. So the exhaust is kind of ridiculous how big it is, um, and it exits down under there. I don't know why. I mean, it's got to be an emissions or regulatory thing that they have to have these huge exhausts and catalytic converters, but man, it doesn't doesn't really look look right if you kind of start looking at it. Coming around this side, chain drive, kickstand, shifter, all that stuff. Quick shifter, of course. The Olin shock. This is your uh, this is your preload, and then you've got you know damping adjustments, things like that. Side of the engine, you've got a lot of exposed kind of wiring and hoses. It's not quite as tidy as maybe like a Triumph or BMW would be, but it's fine. There's nothing there's nothing wrong with it. Special SP badges, Yamaha logo there. Now. Let's come up to the controls. So you can see the mirrors, which work very well. Uh, talked about the levers. Now, we'll get into this here in a second with the TFT. You've got the headlight switch. This controls uh, some of the stuff in the menu system. Cruise control, what the SP has, which is awesome. Simple to use. I've got four-way hazards. Nice to have that turn signals. Stop, start, run. And then this, this button here, which is a little finicky to control your TFT as well. Tubural handlebar. So the nice thing is, it's easy to mount stuff to. You can get different bars if you want. You could raise it, lower it. I just, I like tubulars as opposed to like a clip-on bar setup. 
um, TFT, which is kind of small. So coming back here, like this is where I, you know, you can see how small it is. Um, I wish they would make it bigger. It, it is okay and you get used to it. It's not a big problem. I, I do wish it was a little bit larger though. Okay, let's talk about the electronics a little bit on the SP09. Now read the owner's manual, you know, look at stuff like that because I might get a couple things wrong, but I'll, I'm gonna do my best. So you can see a couple switches here. You've got a mode switch, you've got this up and down button, and then you've got a menu control dial over here. So here's what this means. You've got TCS mode, drive mode, okay? D mode or drive mode is one through four. Uh, and that controls, you can see I can toggle it here. One, two, three, four. Basically four would be, uh, it's the throttle response. The so drive mode is your throttle response, right? Four is really soft, three is okay, two is medium, one is like really sharp, immediate throttle response, right? So that's what the D mode is. Now, TCS mode, if you wanna control TCS mode on a dash, you have to hit mode and then it gives you the TCS mode control. So what this is, is the TCS is the slide control, the lift control, and the traction control. Two is the least intrusive, one, is, uh, I'm sorry, two is the most intrusive or a uh, most uh, intervention. T one is less and then manual mode, you can set up manual mode and how you would do that would, would be, you'd hit this menu button here. It's a little finicky to use this. Um, you'd hit the menu button then you go into here under manual TCS setting and then you can set up how you want. So let's say you want less, you want more lift control but less slide control, or you want, you want to independently configure traction, slide, and lift control, you can do that with the manual settings. So it is nice to have that. To get back out of this menu, you just go, go back. And while you're in this menu, you can see things like setting up your display, setting up your tachometer color. Uh, you can go into your vehicle settings. You can set your shift lights. BC is brake control. So BC2 uh, gives you the, uh, the lean sensitive ABS. You can turn that off by going to BC1. I'm not sure why you would do that. You can set up your quick shifter in there. Uh, you can look at your maintenance, change the brightness clock. So actually it's pretty basic and easy to use. Uh, it's just, it, it's not, this switch is kind of fiddly, but you, you will get used to it. It's not too bad. And then showing the layout of the TFT, you've got the tack up here on the top, your speed. Quick shifter will tell you when you can use the quick shifter by lighting up gear position indicator, D mode, TCS mode. Uh, to change these, so what you can do is you can use this button here to scroll through. You see how you can select this top little menu item or display. So I've got it set to fuel consumption. If I press that, then I can go and scroll through. I can do odometer, trip one, trip two, uh, consumption, temperatures, uh, ambient temperature, coolant temperature, fuel gauge. I liked it, the fuel consumption. It shows me how much fuel I've used, which gives me a really good indication of how much I have left. So I like to leave that. You can also change the one down here. So you've got two information displays there. Then you've got a clock, uh, some indicator lights here, and you've got more indicator lights on the sides. All right, let's get the MT-09 up on the freeway. So typical windy day here in the Banning Pass. I do a lot of my test uh, test riding here for the freeway and we have about a I would say about a 20 mile an hour 20 mile an hour headwind <laughs> I just there's no I can't behave on this bike I'm sorry there's just no way I mean That was a wheelie going up the on-ramp. So let's get up to speed here. So it's a naked bike. You don't have any wind protection. Now I've got this little mini, mini fairing here, which keeps the wind kind of off my torso a little bit and then gives me clean air on my helmet. So I like that. If you have to do a lot of miles at high speed on the highway, you probably want to get a bike with some sort of wind protection, unless you just like to be out in the wind with all the bugs on your helmet. But other than the, other than the lack of wind protection, um, there's really nothing to complain about here. The engine in top gear at 75 miles an hour is 5,000 RPM, so, you know, pretty relaxed. I can set my cruise control here, take my hand off the bar, and I can do this all day. I've got a comfortable seat. I've got a comfortable riding position, I have plenty of power, I've got, you know, uh, good visibility forward, I'm pretty high up in the air, I'm not too crouched down like I would be, you know, on a sport bike, so 
I'm really happy with the situation and this would be a fine bike for you know having to commute uh, on the freeway cruise control 80 miles an hour still very comfortable no complaints man I sure like having cruise control but it is very windy as you can probably hear because my airspeed is probably about 100 miles an hour when you factor in the wind that we're driving into here. That's kind of what I like about this bike is that it has multiple personalities. It's pretty good for, you know, taking longer rides. It can be serious when you want to be, but it's also that hooligan nature. It's just always right under the surface when you want, when you want it. All right, let's do a little testing around town with the MT-09. So this category of bike, like a middleweight naked, you know, they're, they're great urban bikes because they're pretty upright, they're pretty comfortable, they're easy to maneuver, you have the wide handlebar. Um, you have a better kind of view out over the traffic. They're good for lane filtering. Um, you know, they have enough power, but not too much power. They get decent fuel economy, although the fuel tanks tend to be a little small. But for around town bikes, this is good. I mean, obviously you don't need a 115 horsepower uh, 900 cc engine to go around town, but it doesn't hurt either. And if you want a softer throttle response, you can simply go in here, hit the mode button, change your drive mode to number three or four. If I put it in number four, it actually restricts the power and the throttle is super, super, uh, progressive and soft and easy so if you just want to kind of relax or maybe if you're maybe a newer rider and you find the sharper throttle response of this bike to be a little too much which it almost is in modes one and two uh, then you can use you can use mode uh, mode four and then you don't have to use the clutch to shift because you've got the quick shifter which is smooth even at low rpm some quick shifters you know you have to rev up you have to rev the bike higher to get them to work well but this quick shifter even at the low rpm it's really works very well very smooth um in terms of engine heat so let's get up to this traffic light and see if we feel any engine heat but in the time i've owned this bike i really haven't felt any noticeable engine heat um, which is a nice thing because uh, so many of these you know so many of these modern bikes, they really roast your legs. My KTM does that, my Aprilia does that, but I haven't really felt that on this bike. So I think it doesn't run too hot in terms of cooking your leg. I guess you can feel a little bit, but it's, it's not nearly as bad as a lot of motorcycles that I've tested lately. I think because the riding position is so upright, it just makes this bike really good at doing almost everything. Because if you're on a sport bike kind of down like this, it just doesn't feel very natural, especially when you're in a city trying to look out up over traffic and things like that. All right, it's a beautiful day in Southern California. Let's go up my favorite mountain road and see how the MT-09 SP does for us on uh, some, some sport riding. Now, keep in mind a few things. I'm not a professional racer. I'm also on a public road and I'm not going to do things that are super irresponsible or reckless or demonstrate those sorts of things on my YouTube channel. So keeping everything within reason and uh, keeping those things in mind. So I'm gonna kind of show you the different drive modes and how those work, the different traction control modes and how those work. And just talk through kind of the experience of riding this on a twisty road, uh, which as you guessed is pretty damn good. So let's get going. The engine, the exhaust and engine on this bike sound phenomenal and they kind of have a deep, kind of a nice deep growl to it. So that's just, that's just a taste of the acceleration. This is not a bike for beginners. I mean, it'll blast up to 100 miles an hour before you can even realize what's happening. It has so much torque that when you accelerate, like, like when I'm under hard acceleration like that in second or third gear and I'm not trying to do a wheelie, the front wheel is off the ground when that's happening. Which is thrilling and sensational, but also 
you kind of need to know what you're doing and use some restraint now it does have wheelie control or lift control which i which i use i let that i let the electronics keep the bike from doing much uh any sort of major wheelie uh, because i'm not good at wheelies honestly and that's not something that i really like to do um, but i do like the sensation of the front wheel floating above the ground when i'm accelerating it's really uh <laughs> pretty phenomenal so let's talk a little bit about how you can set up the electronics so drive mode one the drive modes you know you've got one through four drive mode four is like a rain mode that actually reduces the peak power drive modes one two and three they don't reduce the power but they change the uh th how aggressive the throttle is so in mode one like this if i just turn the throttle oh, <laughs> if i just turn the throttle a little bit i get a lot of response from the engine right Oh man, I love this motorcycle. This is sensational. And then you can change the drive modes as you're riding. So now if I go into mode four, like I twist the throttle like a lot and not much is happening. So that's good for rain. You know, three, three and two are kind of what you're gonna normally use. Now this leads me to my next point about the MT-09 and this is something that Yamaha has been struggling with for a long time. So I bought an FJ-09 which was the sport touring version of, of this platform uh, many years ago when it came out, 2014, something like that. And that bike was plagued with poor throttle response and jerky fueling. Also had really bad suspension too but that's another discussion. It was so bad that I ended up selling the bike. Yamaha has been struggling with this on their uh, MT on their FZ09, MT09, and FJ09 Tracer9 platform. Now it's gotten better. It's gotten a lot better to where it's not. I wouldn't say it's a deal breaker anymore. It's 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 okay, but it's still it still has that jerkiness on and off. Uh, the best way to describe it is it just feels choppy. Like when you're, there's no smooth way to get on and off the throttle. You can feel the whole bike kind of jerk back and forth. And it's just, it just doesn't allow you to ride as smooth as you'd like to. And it's annoying. Not a deal breaker, but it's annoying. Now in ride modes three and four, it's less pronounced. In ride modes two and one, it's worse. But uh, I just got off the Triumph Sp uh, Street Triple, the new 2024 model. And that bike has a super smooth throttle. Not, not, doesn't have any of the jerkiness at all. So, you know, I really wish Yamaha would address this. Everything else with the motorcycle, I know I need to get around this truck. So the suspension, we can talk about that since I'm not riding too fast right now and I can actually think. Um, suspension on this SP version is sensational. It, it has high and low speed compression adjustments on the front fork, the upgraded front fork from the standard version. I've got preload adjustment in the front. and the back, I have the Olin shock. I've got compression and rebound adjustment and preload. It's sensational. For, for a factory motorcycle suspension, it's about as good as you're gonna get without getting something super exotic. And I think for the price this bike comes in at, that's really a phenomenal value to get those components. Now, in terms of the settings, when I, uh, the first few hundred miles I rode the bike, I felt like the compression was a little harsh, like I was feeling too many of the small bumps come through the chassis. So I dialed out a little bit of the high speed compression on the front. Uh, I left the low speed where it is. I dialed out some compression on the back. The rebound, I actually, yeah, I sped up the rebound like two clicks and things feel really good now. They feel super dialed in. It doesn't have a rough or bouncy ride, but it's very well controlled. And I, you just have the sensation when you're riding this that the tires are in contact with the ground. Even if there's bumps, even if you're riding fast, you have a feeling of control and confidence. And that's what a good suspension does for you. And that's why it's worth the money. So the quick shifter, the quick shifter on this bike is very good. It's above average. It's not the best I've ever used, but it's right up there. It's close. It's close to the best. It's, it's very, very good up and down. And you get a little indicator on here when you can use it, but you can pretty much use it all the time. There's really very little restrictions on when, when you wouldn't be able to use it. Oh my God. 
it's so easy to get carried away on this bike so just talking about the engine the engine has so much torque and so much low and mid-range torque and power it's just very easy to get going fast the thing i like about the bigger engine is that if you're more of a of a more relaxed rider you want to leave the, let's say fifth gear even sixth gear right now sixth gear 3000 rpm even at 3000 rpm this thing has a ton a ton of roll on power because it has that bigger engine if you ride something like a 600 cc sport bike or even a triumph street triple 765 which is a very good motor they don't have anywhere near the mid-range or low-end power and, and acceleration that this bike does. So even in sixth gear, I still have really, really good roll-on power. The motor has kind of two different personalities. So I like three-cylinder engines because they have kind of the, the top end of an inline four, but the torque of a twin, right? They combine that. They also have kind of a grittiness and a little bit more vibration. Uh, and that is true. There is a little bit more buzz at certain RPMs with the three-cylinder engine. So below 5,000 RPM, if I just short shift and do that, the bike feels pretty docile, doesn't feel too crazy or anything, but... <laughs> but above 5,000 RPM, you better hold on to your butt because... Oh! This thing gets pretty crazy above 5,000 RPM. That's when the horsepower really starts to kick in. <laughs> I feel like you have the hooligan bike when you want to, but you also have the more grown up serious bike if you want to and just short shift it or just, you know, cruise around town or cruise the canyons or whatever you want to do but you have those dual personalities built in and I really kind of appreciate that. Now I know some of you might think, well, it's not quite as sporty of a riding position as like a street triple or some of the more aggressive competitors, but you don't really, it doesn't seem to compromise the handling. It seems to have still enough weight and balance front to back and enough weight and pressure into the front tire to give you really good confidence and grip really, really well. This just, this just doesn't get old. This just does not get old. Um, so the handling is great, even though it's kind of upright. And of course, the benefit of that is you're a lot more comfortable. I have more leg room. I don't feel like I'm hunched over like a pretzel. So it's comfortable. Talking about the brakes. So the brakes are kind of interesting. They have a little, they feel a little soft initially. Um, I didn't like that at first. I thought, oh, these brakes feel kind of weak. But the truth is, like, watch this. Like, when you need to stop, like, the bike stops on a dime. You just have to squeeze the brake a little bit harder than on some other bike. So that's all there is. It's just more of a progressive feel. Now, I don't know how this, the brakes would hold up on extended track sessions or laps or stuff. I can't really speak to that yet. Um, I'm not sure, but for street use, they're more than adequate. They just have kind of a wooden or soft initial feeling. The ABS does, uh, you can change the ABS settings to be more or less intrusive, um, which is kind of nice. Um, I have it on a less intrusive setting and you get a tiny bit of real wheel skid, just the tiniest bit before the ABS starts to kick in. So this bike has so much torque, you could just leave it in fifth gear on this whole road. You could even ride this whole highway in sixth gear. It won't be as much fun that way, but look, if I, let me show you, I'll lug this thing down 2,500 RPM, just above idle. And I still have clean, strong roll on power even in six gear going up the hill like this it's pretty phenomenal and then if you want to get crazy you're only a couple downshifts away from you know beast mode pros and cons summary for the mt09 sp you know we, we've really covered the highlights i think very well we've also kind of talked about the things i don't like but just to summarize the downsides if you're considering one of these 
fuel tank, it's a little small. It could, it could do with being a little bit larger just for the fuel range, um, but it's not, too, it's not too out of place in the category. The TFT is a little bit small. I, I would wish for a little bit larger TFG just, just to be able to, to read it a little bit easier at a glance. Also the brakes, the brakes do feel a little bit wooden, a little bit numb, but they do have good stopping power, so it, it's okay. And some other reviewers have kind of blown that out of proportion, but it would be nice to have a little bit sharper brake feel. Uh, now beyond those things, I really can't find anything to complain about. For me personally, I don't like the styling and it probably was a mistake for me to buy a motorcycle where I don't like the styling because for me, I want the bike to look good. That's part of my motorcycle ownership experience. And uh, it doesn't really do it for me. From the side, it's okay. I just don't like it from the front and there's just nothing that can be done about that. Let's talk about the competition for the 2023 MT-09 SP. So this is not a buyer's guide. We can't go into detail on how this exactly stacks up against all the other bikes in the segment. And I'll fully admit that some of the other bikes in the category have much sexier, much better styling, in my opinion, than the MT-09. But it really boiled down to a couple things in terms of my own personal decision. One was the fact that it's a Yamaha. It's a known factor in terms of its reliability, dependability, quality, and all that kind of stuff. Number two was the value. I thought that getting all the upgraded suspension, the cruise control, all the good features for the price point that this bike's come in at, that this bike came in at, sorry, was really represented the best value in this category. If I hadn't purchased this bike, honestly, I probably would have bought a Street Triple RS, the new updated Street Triple. I have reviews on both the standard Street Triple R and the RS model, and I'll link those here below. I really like that bike. However, the Yamaha does have a more comfortable upright riding position. It's more comfortable for riding more than a couple hours at a time. The Street Triple is more of an aggressive riding position, and I wasn't too fond of that. Overall, there's a lot of really, really good bikes in this uh, middleweight naked sport bike category, and you should definitely take a look and test ride as many as you can, sit on as many as you can, consider the styling, consider if you have any brand loyalties, look at the warranties, look at the features. But having said that, the MT-09, especially the SP, is probably the best value in the segment. Final thoughts on the MT-09 SP. Now, I own this bike, so there's gonna be more videos with it, and we've already had a few videos out there. Uh, it's a wonderful motorcycle and you really cannot go wrong with it. Keep in mind the pros and the cons that I've talked about in this video and my other videos on this bike, but uh, it's phenomenal. It's, it's an amazing motorcycle. Every time I start it up and go for a ride, I really do enjoy it. So I hope this review was informative and useful. If it was, please support Big Rock Moto. There's ways to do that in the description and the pinned comment below. Other than that, please ride safe and I'll see you out there.